God wants to speak to us. God wants to speak to us. And God initiates conversation. God talks to us. And so that's the beauty about God. You don't need to dial His number huh? and say, Hello? His line on you is like Wi-Fi one. It's always on. Always on. You ask Him, He will answer you. You pray, He hears your prayer. If you pray a bit more and your, the answer is, is, and when God sees this to answer you, He will answer you. All right? And more so when we talk about spiritual gifts. When you talk about spiritual gift, when you pray for somebody and you ask God, what should I tell him? Immediately God will tell you. That's how God, how good God is. How merciful God is. How loving God is. Because God always keeps the communication line on. Only sometimes our Wi-Fi not working. Hello? Sometimes our Wi-Fi not working, we never on. Ah, you naughty fella, never on your Wi-Fi. And then sometimes your Wi-Fi spoil. Huh? How about my time? God's fault or not? No, it's never God's fault. God is always ready and willing to speak to us. And so we talk about three parts here, the voice of God. But I have a feeling today I have to do it twice. How to hear God. And I will do it uh, this week and next week. I don't know if I can finish next week because it's 20 minutes next week. Okay, so uh, now please be on the alert. Huh? So I don't know whether I can finish, but never mind. To learn truth slowly also can. Okay, we don't want to go on lightning speed and then you are not picking up anything and not learning. Let's look at Matthew 4 verse 4. Matthew 4 verse 4. I was intrigued by this verse. For a long, long time, especially when I first came to know the Lord, when I first came to know Christ, I was reading the book of Matthew. I came to this verse. And he answered, now this is the temptation of Christ. He was in the wilderness fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And uh, at the end of the fasting, the devil came to him. And the devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, turn, you can turn this stone into bread and you can eat and then jesus said it is written man shall not live by gardenia bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of god man shall not live now i could understand this when jesus said man shall not live by bread alone we don't live based on just natural food that is the spiritual side of us you understand or not? We need uh, physical food. We need spiritual food as well. So man shall not live by bread alone. That's fine. But he says man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So at what point I'm questioning God? What do you mean by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God? Can, how about, why, why not by every word that I read on tablets or every word that I see or every word that I read. Why, why every word that comes out of the mouth of God? Now, there is a difference when you read the Bible and difference when you hear what God says. You understand what I'm saying? So, then God began to show me that it's not just reading the Bible that keeps you spiritually alive. It is hearing God that keeps you spiritually alive. Can I hear amen from you? You understand what I'm saying? It's not reading the Bible that keeps you alive. It is hearing God that keeps your, fellow, your, vibe, your fellowship and relationship with God vibrant. Because people can read the Bible and come to a conclusion that there is no God. Scholars who study the Bible and study the Hebrew and the Greek and yet do not have a relationship with God. It's not about reading the Bible. Now, reading is important. I'm not saying it's not important. It's not about reading. It's about hearing. It's about hearing. What keeps us spiritually alive is hearing God. Remember what I said last week? If you and your wife is living together in a house, and if your wife is not talking to you, for the past three days, 
Do you know you're in trouble? There are few things I know that I'm in trouble. All right? When she's silent, when the pots and pans seems to be louder, she's talking. Okay? And when she call me by my full name, Clement Wong Yi Hong. You know, like the nurse. The nurse at the clinic will call me by my full name. Wong Yi Hong. So when your wife call you by your full name, you're in trouble. I see name. You're in trouble. So it is not the written word that keeps our relationship with God vibrant. It is the spoken words in our hearts. Now, uh, let me just go a little bit more because uh, yesterday I didn't talk about it. Some people tell me close the service early. I should lah. Should we close early today? Okay, let's close in prayer right now. Okay, now, uh, now uh, there is what we call the Logos and the Rema. For some of you, the new one who have not heard this, uh, the Logos, it, now the word word, W-O-R-D, is uh, translated from two, uh, two Greek words, Logos and Rema. Logos is the written word. Rema is the spoken word. Now, when you read the Bible, you're reading the Logos. The Logos. And God can cause the Logos to become Rema to you. Alright? To become Rema. For example, for example, when Peter asked Jesus, Lord, if, you, if it is really you, in the middle of the night, all right, Jesus was walking on the water. And Peter said to Jesus, if it is you, really you, ask me to come. And Jesus said, come. That's the rema. The rema is a specific word to a specific person at a specific time for a specific purpose. That is the rema. All right? Now, when you read the Bible now, in this story, you read Jesus spoke to Peter, come. That was a rema word to Peter, but now it's the logos for all of us. Can you understand what I'm saying? Huh? Logos. Most written, most of our logos that we read was rema. When Jeremiah prophesied, it was rema. Then it was recorded and written down, and it became the written word. You understand what I'm saying? So many Christians do not understand or don't even believe in the Rema word. They only trust completely in the Logos. The Logos is a written word, but we need to hear God. His word for the occasion. His word for that time, which is very, very important. So how do I keep my relationship vibrant with God? You need to hear God speaking to you constantly, all the time. Amen? Do you understand what I'm saying? If I am to keep my relationship with my wife vibrant, I need to talk to her. Okay? You need to talk to your wife. Wife talk to you is not a problem. Pastor, my wife like a radio one, cannot turn off. But the problem is the guys are not talking. I tell you why your wife keeps talking. Because you don't talk. Ask you questions, you never answer. So ask you ten times. Lah. You know why mother neck at you? Amos, you know why mother neck at you? Because you don't obey the son neck at you. Correct or not? I, uh... But if you are a naggy woman, you must cut down a bit. Lah, huh? Okay. Neck will be even in the bathroom. You talk. I told you already. I was bed lah. How many times already? Ah, huh? use soap properly lah. Huh? Wipe all your body. Use the soap. Huh? Talk, talk, talk. While he's bathing, you're still talking. No, that's called hanging already lah. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Many Christians struggle with hearing God's voice. Many Christians struggle with hearing God's voice. The struggle is not in their hearing, but in the doubts that you create. When you hear God. 
you, when you hear something or where there is an unction in your spirit, or when there is a sensing to do something, you begin to question, is it God? Is it me? Is it the devil? Is it my friend? Or is it just my feeling? That is the struggle that most of us face. So if we remove that struggle, I will talk about this in my part three. It won't be next week because next week I'm going to continue here. If we remove the struggle, because what I mean is there is an element of faith. Faith tells me that if God speaks, I trust that voice as being from God. All right? I don't doubt what God is telling me. I've got to understand faith and I've got to understand obedience. I've got to understand to do what God tells me to do. Can you understand? So our struggle oftentimes is this. And let me just say it. Sometimes, but pastor, what if I'm wrong? Never mind, Lord. Wrong, then you learn. No? Hello? The more you listen, the more you will recognize. Huh? I tell you, I recognize my wife's voice. Huh? Oh, she may want to pretend to be somebody. Immediately, I recognize her voice. We can be in a crowd of 500 people. She raise and walk, talk. I know it's her. I close my eyes, I know it's her. Because my ear already embedded. Her voice embedded. Already. Ah, you understand? Not? Because I hear so often. So many years already. 30, 40 years I've been hearing her. So I recognize her voice. You know why we don't recognize God's voice? Because, number one, sometimes we are not hearing. Number two, we hear, we don't obey, we are afraid. Because it's when you obey, then you're, ha, ah, that was God. You understand? Ha, ah, that was God. So I've been praying for Brother Wong, and the Spirit of God tell me something, and I tell to him, after the service, he says, Pastor, well, what you say are very good for me. That's why I needed, ha, ah, that was God. Right? Ah, that was God. So we are on this journey of learning. Of learning. It's very important. Don't be, don't, don't be indifferent. Because God wants to speak to you all the time. He wants to speak to you about many, many things. So you need to be aware and alert that God can speak to you anytime and in many ways. He can speak to you anytime. Yes or not? Right? I told you last week, right? Anytime. Anytime. And in many ways. And today, we want to discover what are some ways God speaks to us. Let's go to number one. Some of the ways are through the word. How easy, how nice, how simple. God speaks to us through the word. And God cannot speak to you through the word if you are not reading it. Logical or not? If you read only once a month, how can God speak to you? You need to read the Word of God. It, yet, it is the easiest way to hear God, especially when some truth really minister to you. Okay? You can be reading something and suddenly this verse really minister to you. When that happens, spend some time to meditate on what you have just read. For example... You have just read Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, you have been reading this for years and years and years, but on that Saturday night you read it, and that verse just jumped into your spirit, makes you very excited. Oh, yeah, the Lord is my shepherd. Then you ask, What? What does it mean, the Lord is my shepherd? What does it mean? You go deeper. You don't just say, oh yeah, the Lord is my shepherd. You go deeper. What does it mean, the Lord is my shepherd? Aha. Uh -huh. It means He will guide me. He will lead me. He will protect me. Okay, all depends on what situation you are in now. If you're, in the, if you're a health worker and you are in GH, health ward, with 55 COVID patients around you, the Lord is my shepherd. 
He will protect me. Hallelujah. That doesn't mean you don't put on a mask, you silly fella, and put on a glove, and you do what is necessary. But in your spirit, you say, God, you are my shepherd. You will protect me. All right? Now, that leads, that this is what the words mean to me. All right? The Lord is my shepherd. And then, why is the Lord, why is God telling me this today? The Lord is my shepherd, that He will protect me. Why? Why? Well, maybe on Monday you got to go to the hospital to work. That's why. Ah, so God is telling you, He will protect you. You go to the hospital, He will protect you. You have to go somewhere, He will protect you. If you have to go to work, He will protect you. Because that word becomes alive to you now. And then you ask, when? When will this verse be such? Why is God telling me and when? Ha! Ah, I know when. When I go to work. I know when. I have to go out station to meet this person or to do this thing. I know when the Lord will. Now, if the Lord is your shepherd in, in that He will lead you, you will say, oh, I am... I have to do a project on Monday in workplace and I'm in charge of a group to, to do this project. And so now I know what he meant, that the Lord will lead me. I have need to be sensitive to him because I don't know what to do on Monday, but I can lead and God can lead me and he can speak to me because he's my shepherd. Why is he telling me? Because I'm scared. I'm scared on Monday. I got no clue what to do. I'll give you an example, another example, right? When? Monday. Tomorrow. How? Oh. God will show you. On Monday morning, you pray like how? God will show you something will just click in your spirit. Or God will show you. You ask the Mr. How. There's one Mr. How there. He has got an idea. So in the gathering, how? Tell me. This project, you got any idea or not? Yeah, lah, sir, I got lah, but I don't know whether to tell you or not. It's a stupid idea. You tell me. Stupid, because I know you got an idea. Tell me. How you know after that over already? How you know I got an idea? How you know? How you know? God told you on Monday. God told you on Sunday. Before you met, God told you already. Isn't it amazing? I tell you this, how you apply the word of God. Lah. Don't just read and be excited. The Lord is my shepherd. Ask question. What, why, how, when? Alright? Okay? Understand? I like go quickly. So the word of God is very, very powerful. It speaks to us. It ministers to us. How does God speak to us? Through vision and dream. Let's look at Acts chapter 9, chapter 10, verse 9 to 16. Acts chapter 10, verse 9 to 16. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Paul, Peter went up to the housetop to pray about the sixth floor. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Now, understand the word trance. Trance is like your present senses, uh, I wouldn't say senses, your present awareness is taken away and it's like you're caught into something and you see a vision. All right? You know where you are. You know you're on the rooftop. If something wakes you, you will feel it. If the weather is hot, you can sense it. But as you close his eyes, he went into a trance. Now, this is not like a medium siong tong, huh? medium, huh? the spirit come over. Not that kind of trance. I don't think it's that kind of trance, right? But it's like the spirit of God, the anointing came over and took control of his awareness and that now he's totally aware of this picture that he see. What did he see? He fell into a trance and saw heaven open an object like a great sheet. All right, who say Aladdin was the first one who sat on the sheet? Peter saw it. 
he saw a sheet come down, a sheet come down, bound at the four corners, and then descended to him and let down to the earth, and in it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, birds of the air. Sound like Corona, man. But I'm sure got siu yok there. Got siu yok la, cha siu la. Don't know a monitor lizard or not. And a voice came to him, say, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. The Lord told him to kill and eat as he saw the food. Thank God it's not Sam Law. He will finish everything. See, if it's Peter, see what Peter said? Not so, Lord. I've never eat anything common. Because for a Jew, there are certain food they don't eat. Fish without scale, all right? Uh, uh, animals that have, uh, that, uh, have hoof, uh, close hoof, they don't eat. Uh, like pork, la, they don't eat, okay? And a voice came to him, I don't eat anything common or anything unclean, and a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed you must not call common. This was done three times. It's a, this was done three times. Tiga kali, God had to convince him. Why? It's not really about the food. The Jews were... Uh, what happened was, we all know the story. Cornelius sent two guys. Uh, Cornelius uh, uh, was an official. And he was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. He sent two of his guys to look for Peter to come to his house and pray for him. And up to that time, up to that time, the Jews' mindset is always thinking that uh, the faith should remain within the Jewish race. They are God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But now Jesus came and he died for everyone including the Gentiles. So it takes God this uh, to speak to... God had to speak to him in a very powerful manner. Because if it's Peter, if, if, if it's any way else, maybe Peter will not believe. He's not Sam. Sam will eat it all. But Peter will argue with God. No, I'm not going to eat. No, I'm not going to follow. No, 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 I'm... And God said, what God has cleansed, don't make it unclean. Now, it's not about eating at this point. It's basically about you've got to go to Cornelius' household and preach the gospel because now the gospel is, has reached the Gentiles. Go and preach to these Gentiles. And so Peter went. He obeyed finally. He went. So God speaks to us through dreams and vision. Now, now let's talk about vision a little bit now. Vision... Uh, some people can experience like Peter. It's like in a trance. But vision can also be picture in the spirit. All right? Sometimes I pray for some people, I see a picture in my spirit. I'm aware, I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm praying for this person, but I see a picture in my spirit. So I explain, I tell this person what I see. Uh, one very common thing I see is when I pray for people, I see children. Sometimes I see children around them. And God is telling me that He has got a children ministry. He, he has a gift to minister to children. I tell you, ministering to children need gifting. Oh. Need gifting. Oh. Don't play, play. Oh. For me, preach to adult easier than preach to children. Oh. I'm very scared of preach to children. Cold sweat one time. My wife can do it, not me. Okay. So vision are pictures you see in the spirit. Whether with your eyes closed or open. Okay. You can see. Uh, now, let me also say this. We all think in pictures. We all think in pictures. We don't think in words. All right. For example, uh, now when you read the Bible, every time you read, actually more so the parable or the story, you begin to imagine in pictures, right? 
where Jesus is, how he touched, and how he called Lazarus. Now, when Jesus called Lazarus out, I picture Jesus was on my left side. He's standing there, and then there's a mountain there. And then he said, roll the stone away, and they roll the stone away. And uh, I picture how Lazarus coming out from the cave, from the, the tomb. So it's a picture. You understand or not? So, uh, let's say, for example, if your wife called you in the office and say, please come back, our son is having diarrhea. All right? Our son is having diarrhea. Now, when you drive home, do you think our son is having diarrhea? Is that sentence in your mind? No, but you have a picture of your son. All right, he's crying, he's very sick. Okay, so I need to go back and pick him and send him to, the, to see a doctor. So we think in terms of picture. And God sometimes communicates to us in picture. Now, sometimes you can see a word. You can see a word. But most time, God can show you. A picture speaks a thousand words, some people say, right? So that's how God many times speaks to us. But how about dreams? Some dreams are from God. Most dreams are not. Okay? Most dreams are not. So don't get all paranoid about dreams. Keep asking me, Pastor, uh, I dream this like that. I dream about Siu Yok yesterday. One table full of siu. What is that? Uh? It means you are greedy. La. What interpretation you want? Right now. now, sometimes dream comes from our subconscious. Subconscious meaning uh, something that you are excited about. You know. Now, let's say you're, you dream that you are flying to America next month. You are going to go to Disneyland and you are going to... Uh, whatever place, Universal Studio, and so on. And then, one night you dream that you missed the plane. I've ever dreamed like that, no, missed the plane. The plane going, I was running after the plane. No? Praise God, I woke up. Ah, I mean, it was a dream. I ever dream that I did not prepare my sermon. Went to a church. The people said, hey, you're preaching. Where's your message? Oh, you're saying, look. Forgot to prepare my sermon. Wow, I tell you, very scary for me. I don't know about you. Very scary. Then I woke up. Thank God. It is a dream. Like I told you earlier, sometimes I dream, I dream that some members who didn't come for a long time came back. Then I wake up. I uh, only a dream. This fellow, a long time. I call him, never come. You understand? So these things are in our subconscious. Because you have thought of it, because you are excited about something and then you dream. Some of you will dream that exam time come. Walk into the exam room, you forgot to study. You dream, panic, ah, you wake up, praise God, it was only a dream. So what does it mean, master? No, that one is from your subconscious, okay? Or overeat undigest food from yesterday. You eat supper a lot, maybe you will dream. But dream is a mystery. I want to tell you something about dream. I don't know whether anyone can ever study dream. It's a mystery. I think God, God wants to make our sleep exciting. Can I not? I know some people wear spectacles when they sleep. So why? So that when I dream, I can see better. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whether that works or not. <laughs> but dream... <laughs> but dream is something that I don't know, cannot explain one really. Uh, and how God created us and, you know, God made it possible for us to dream. is amazing, isn't it? I think it's very amazing. Of course, the devil can also come into your life by giving you nightmare. I pray for many people who has nightmare and afraid to go to bed and sleep. Afraid that we have to break that authority and that power in the name of Jesus. But there are some dreams and if God gives you dream, God also will show you the interpretation. What it means, okay? And sometimes if you don't understand, you will dream again. Similar dream. He gave Pharaoh two dreams. And of course, Pharaoh being an unbeliever, therefore non-believer, 
So praise God, he had, he had Joseph to interpret the dream. And that was also Joseph's time to come out of prison and to be set free and that he became the prime minister of Egypt through the front door. Okay? So that's how God uh, uh, promoted him and blessed him and used him. Use him. So dreams has its function. I don't know whether you ever had dream from God or not. To be frank with you, I don't know whether I really had a dream from God or not. I don't know whether I had a dream. Okay? I can't think. Anyway, I don't want to waste time. Let's go to the next one. Next one. Number three. God can speak to us through another person. I always say this. God can speak to you through anyone. Anyone. Even your children. Even non-Christian. God can use them to speak to you. So be very aware and alert. Now let's look at this scripture. This is an interesting scripture. There have been debate over this passage of scripture. Debate. Alright? What is it? I'll tell you later. As we state many days. Now this is Luke writing. Luke wrote the book of Acts. As we state many days... A certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And when he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hand and feet and said, Thus say the Holy Spirit, So shall the Jews of Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt, this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now, now before I continue, very interesting. A prophet came, all right? Whether he's a prophet or not, but he's a man of God. He came and God spoke to him. So he came, maybe they gathered around in the hall or in the room. And then the prophet came. I don't know whether Peter, uh, Paul was wearing his belt at that time. So if you are at home, you are relaxed, or maybe it's an extra belt. Those days, they don't wear leather belt. They wear a piece of, uh, it's like a cloth, a string-like thing. To tie, all right. So he may have left it on the chair, all right. So the prophet Agabus came. He took the belt. The Bible says he took Peter's belt. I don't know whether Agabus knew or not. And then he tied himself. Very funny, isn't it? This prophet, some prophet do, you know, he tied himself and tied his own leg, all right. Then he said, God. When you go to Jerusalem, God, there will be persecution awaiting the one. So shall the Jews the, at Jerusalem bind the man who owned this belt and deliver him to the hands of the Gentiles. Next verse. Now when he heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Verse 18, then Paul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I'm ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Some scholars feel that Paul made a mistake by going to Jerusalem. He should have gone somewhere else. He should have gone to England. But Paul chose to go. I believe, I believe Paul was ready. I believe that prophetic word was to help Paul to be ready, to be prepared when that persecution comes. Now we can scroll back one chapter earlier to Acts 20, verse 22 to 24. Acts 20, 22 to 24. Now one chapter early. See now, I go bound in the Spirit. Now, this is the word of Paul. See And see now, I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, knowing that the things will happen to me there, except the Holy Spirit testify in every city, saying, that chains and tribulation await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, that I may finish my race with joy, 
and a ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. He knew that every place he went, he goes, there will be change, there will be tribulation and persecution. But this time when he go to Paul, uh, Jerusalem, it will be the last because they would catch him and imprison him. They would be the last days of his freedom. And let me just say something about prophetic word. Prophetic word does not mean, does given to you does not mean for you to run away and escape. Sometimes he prepares you. Jesus knew that he was going to the cross, but he willingly laid down his life. Paul knew he will be persecuted, but he willingly surrendered himself to the will of God. And Paul wrote some of the most powerful epistles while in prison, like Philippians, uh, the, 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 the Angolatians, the prison epistle. And while he was caught, he bare testimony to a king called Agrippa. Remember? If you read the further chapter in the book of Acts, he preached to King Agrippa, and King Agrippa said this, you almost converted me. You all, almost make me believe. I don't know like, whether he did or not at the end. So sad if he didn't, right? So I want you to know something. God can use anyone to speak to us. He can use, he can use a donkey. He used a donkey to speak to Balaam. If he can use a donkey, he can use any monkeys. And let the monkey say, All right, praise God. So, God can use anyone. And, and when you are being prayed for, a pastor or a man of God come, or even Christian leaders or whatever come and pray for you and spoken some words to you, listen. Listen. A prophetic word can be very powerful. It can break open some things in your life. And it can show you that God cares for you, He loves you, and He's there. He's there. His presence is there. God is there to do the miraculous work. Some of you experienced it on Monday when, when Charles Ibrahim came, ministered to us some secret things of your heart, some desires of your heart spoken to you. Then I think, wow, God hears our prayer right now. God hears our prayer. He knows what is our desire. And He wants to speak to us. He wants to because He's a good God. Because God can use anyone to speak to us. So I encourage you that God can also use you to do the same. Amen? Sometimes when you pray for your husband, God may speak to you. Your husband doing business, your husband fly here, fly there, God can speak to you. Talk to your husband, is what the law says. Same thing, husband, speak to your wife. If you pray for your wife, pray for your children. What is God telling you? If God tells you, then you speak to your family. I want you to know again and again, God wants to speak. He is not silent. Amen? It's a good God. So, He can speak to us even a sermon like this. I tell you, I preach sermons in many, many places, preach many, many places. Some people come up to me and say, thank you, Pastor, for you said this. You really ministered to me. For you said this. And then after that, I go out and say, I didn't say it, no. But he, she said, I say, you know what? You can preach a message to a hundred people and the Holy Spirit can speak different things to a hundred people. You understand what I'm saying? Huh? So many times people come and say, Thank you, Pastor, you said this. Okay? I didn't really say it. Yes, I said it, but that's not what I meant. You understand? Huh? But that's what it meant to him 
or to her. That's the most important thing because the Holy Spirit is speaking to that person. Understand or not? That's why when you listen to a message, don't choose speaker. Sometimes the speaker can be very boring. Still one word can speak to you one. Hello. Understand? Or you speak in broken English. Still one word can speak. Be open to the Lord. God can use anybody. Let's go to number four. Very quickly, number four. Through circumstances. It's often called open and closed doors. Although this shop should not be used as the final way in which God speaks to us, but some open and closed doors are very certain that it is God's will. For example, I met some people who ended up in Sabah. They are from Kedah. They are from Malacca. But now they are in Sabah. I said, how? What happened to you? How come you are here? He said, well, I got a job here. I was offered a job. And then from there, I went into business. Then I met a girl. Then I married and bought a house. So you can say that it was an open door that God wanted him to be in, in Saba, in KK. Open door, closed doors. Okay? Now, let's say, for example, too, if you're applying for work, right? Applying for work. Five companies. All right? All the four company, four company close to you say no, we reject, we regret, we can't offer you. But all these four companies were what the job were what you really wanted. But then the fifth one, ah, uh, it's one sapu longkang kind of job, you know. Open to you, welcome. Come and join us. So what do you do? Huh? In times like this, don't be action lah. Huh? You've been searching a job for, for many months already. What? This is an open door. What? Pray. La. You never know. One day you're Sapu Longkang. The next day you can be the CEO of the company. Never know. God can open doors for you like this. God can choose to promote you there. So open doors and close doors. Although it is not final, wow, oh, this is the one that will accept me. I pastor say, better go. Lah. You pray a bit about it a bit more. If there's peace in you, if there's peace, and you go for it. Don't always keep knocking and knocking on doors that are closed. What God has closed, no man can open. What God has opened, no man can close. The problem is some Christians keep knocking. Until today, they want to go to America and work. 20 years already, apply. What he do here? Don't want to work, full-time apply. Something wrong with you. The door close, you want to keep opening your pride open. Hello? I met some refugees also. Now, I'm not, I, I don't think it's in my right place to say, I may not say the right thing, but some refugees have been waiting too long to go to America. Now, America, you know, like Trump, foreigner now. Huh? Maybe they should try another nation. Maybe Malaysia is where they should be. Or Malaysia should don't want them, I don't know. But if you have been trying to pry open a door for too long, then you better ask God again. If the door is closed, it's closed. It's not what you want, it's what God wants. Sometimes we want it. We want, we want, we want. It's not for us, we want. Like Samson. Uh. One Delilah. Not for you. I want, I want. She's not a good girl. She's not right. I want. Go lah. Pry open the door lah. Get into trouble. When we force it, we get into trouble. It's called disobedience. You understand or not? It's called 
disobedient. Close door, open door. I've heard some people cannot find job long time. Find this one. You know why not? Because God called them to ministry. Little what? <laughs> or go try apply many school cannot get it. Because Bible school. Apply ten school, all the nine school reject. Bible school say you are welcome. But pastor, I straight A student no ten A's. Go Bible school. Ah? Wasted. What wasted? You think God choose to be people? Ah? Open door, close door. Be aware. What door God has closed, don't pry it open. God will open for you. It is the right time. Amen? Understand? Okay, let's go quickly. We go to number five. And that's true an audible voice. An audible voice is not very common. Alright, sometimes you do hear, but it's not very common. Alright, let's look at first Samuel chapter three, verse one to five. Chapter three, verse one to five. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Now that's that's terrible. Because Eli, you know, allowed sin to take place, even right in the temple. You can read the story later on. There were no widespread revelation, and it came to pass at the time while Eli was lying down in his place when his eyes began to grow so dim that he could not see. And before the Lamb of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here I am. God called Samuel and he said, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you call me. And he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. Three times God called him. Samuel, Samuel. He ran to Eli. Why? Because he heard somebody call him. So he thought Eli called him. So he went to Eli. Did you call me? Eli said, no. Ah. Sleep. Ah. Don't catch on me. Second time come. So finally Eli said, the next time God called you, the next time you heard your voice being called, you ask the Lord, Lord, it is I. So audible voice. Another example I believe audible war is Saul on the way to Damascus to persecute the Christian he was knocked off the horse and there was a shining light at him and a voice spoke to him right Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me it's an audible voice so sometimes God can speak to you in audible voice, now it doesn't happen all the time. I think it can be very frightening. If 3 o'clock in the morning, you wake up, go to the toilet, and you heard a voice, bell. I don't think I want God to do that to me. Bell. You go to bed, you see your wife, she called me, she's sleeping. Bell. Bell. I don't know about you. you. God called me like that. I run out. <laughs> audible voice. Don't, so don't always look for audible voice. On very rare occasion he does, but God doesn't speak that way all the time. I will talk to you about how he speaks to us most of the time next week. So log in. If we cancel our service, you log in at 9.30. But I don't think I can finish that in 20 minutes. So maybe I divide that also, okay? How does God speak to us, all right? Let's go, let's conclude. In conclusion, I'd like all of us to stand and read Psalms 29. The power of the voice of God. The power of the word of God. And remember, it's not the Logos word, but it's the spoken word. 
Okay, shall we all read together? Are you ready? Psalms 29. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, give unto the Lord glory and strength, give unto the Lord the glory due His name, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, the voice of the Lord is over the waters, the glory of God thunders, the Lord is over many waters, the voice of the Lord is powerful, the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The, yes, the Lord splinter the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flame of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in His temple, everyone says glory. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood and the Lord sits as the King forever. And the Lord will give strength to His people and the Lord will bless His people with peace. What a powerful voice. It's not about how loud. It's not about a booming voice. It's about hearing the voice of God. Even a still small voice can break a chain in your life. Can bring freedom to you. We have been reading the Bible. We go to church. We're listening to a sermon. But Lord, I want to hear the word for me of the day. Tell me something that can break the cedars and break the bondage.